Hi everyone and welcome to this video. Last time we introduced the concept of perceptron and we also introduced the problem of pattern recognition and we have shown that some exact approach exists to, um, to solve this kind of problem. Uh, this time we are going to take another concept that we have introduced previously which is the concept of Hopfield uh, networks and we are going to use them as analog digital converters. So for those who are not familiar with this series of videos I have um, made a video on Hopfield networks a while ago and the link is here you will be able to find this link in the description below and you can also go through these articles that I am showing here these are two articles uh, this will be important because this is going to give you every single mathematical detail that I am going to use uh, in um, this video of course these formulas I I'm just going to use them I will not justify them or show how uh, they have obtained them you will have to use these articles in order to understand it uh, what I'm going to do is to provide a short recap on upfield networks then I will provide an introduction on analog digital converters what they are and what they are used for and eventually I will introduce a training method that can be used to train an upfield network to behave as an analog digital converter of course as always I am going to present an implementation in basic of all of these and I will run a few examples so that you can follow concretely what is being explained here and how you can use these things for yourself. Uh, as always I am reporting a few links here. The first two will practically tell you uh, how to make your own environment so that you can run the examples that you see in, in this video and the last two are uh, put there because essentially you can use these two packets uh, these two software uh, packages to train any network that you have at hand so i still keep them here in case you are interested in this uh, in this sort of endeavor and as always i want to thank all of you for still uh, subscribing for leaving comments and for continuing to share these videos this is very encouraging uh, for me so thank you so much for doing this So a quick recap on Hopfield Networks. Um, I have left uh, a link below in the description in case you are interested in digging into the details. Uh, but just to recap here. So a Hopfield Network is an artificial neural network just that this artificial neural network has a very specific architecture and the architecture consists of having every single neuron connected to every other neuron in the network so i'm showing here two different ways of representing them graphically but what you see here on the left hand side and on the right hand side of this figure is essentially exactly the same hopfield network just that one is presented in a circular layer and the other one is represented as a planar layer or let's say a linear layer but practically they are the same because every neuron is connected to every other neuron of course there are ways to train these, neur uh, these neural networks I have shown for example in that previous video how to train them so that they would behave as memories uh, in particular as content addressable memories in this video here we are going to see how to train them so that they can behave as analog digital converters so we are now going to talk a little bit about analog digital converters just to understand what, what they mean and what they are used for so let's introduce analog digital converters but let's do this in a very very simple way we just want to understand what are the functionalities that we are trying to duplicate by using Hopfield networks and what you see here on the right hand side is more or less what this converter would be you have an input that is on the top um, part of the figure here and the input is represented by a value that can be 
a real number that is in the range 0, 1. So it's a real number that um, can be between 0 and 1. And what the converter needs to do is to transform this input into something that is now digital. So in this particular case here, I am showing a free bit converter. This would mean that in practice, you have your continuous signal here that could be, for example, a voltage, and you want to transform this voltage in a series of bits that are going to tell you where you stay in the range of values that um, you can have in terms of input. So, for example, if your input is zero, you would expect that all the bits are zero. But if uh, when you increase the value you, uh, of the input, you expect that now the output is going to increase in chunks. So this is why it becomes digital. So at some point, if you reach a certain value for the input, you expect that now your bits will be 0, 0, 1, which is what you see now in the plots on the right hand side. And if you continue to increase, you will practically go to another level that is represented in binary, which will be 0, 1, 0, and so on until you get to the maximum value that the converter can um, deal with and it is going to provide in this particular case an output that is equal to 111. So in practice, we want to train an off-field network to behave in exactly that way. We provide a real number and we want to transform it in a series of bits. In our particular case, we will not um, use, uh, we will not obtain a free bit converter. We are going to make things slightly more sophisticated and we are going to train an off-field network to uh, behave as a 4-bit analog digital converter. So we are now ready to see how to actually train the network to obtain the converter. So let's talk about uh, the training method to obtain an AD converter out of an off-field network. Um, I'm showing here on the screen several formulas that have been extracted from the second paper that I refer to in the description below. And what you see here is that essentially you have two formulas, the f or let's say two sets of formulas. The first formula, uh, which is formula 5, uh, represents the energy or the total energy of the system uh, represented by the off-field network. In practice, what has been made there, if you follow the reasoning of the paper, you will see that in practice what they want is to obtain this. They want to have an energy function that forces the off-field network to achieve two things. The first thing is that when you have X as your input, the right uh, conversion in, um, let's say, digital levels has to be provided. And the second thing is you want to make sure that the output that the network provides is made only of zeros and ones. So it is a digital, uh, it is a digital output. Um, I'm not going through the mathematics involved in Formula 5, but I promise if you go through the paper, you will see that the reasoning is very, very simple to follow. Once you get formula 5, you can obtain from this the set of formulas that you get in formula 6 that is shown on the screen again. And there, what you obtain in particular is that you can compute the coefficients for the connections uh, made in the off-field network, which are represented by Tij, by these coefficients Tij. But as you can see, it's very, very simple to compute those. So in practice, you will not need any numerical method to find those values. In practice, you will follow this formula here so that your off-field network behave as a, um, a converter, uh, as an AD converter. And then we have now introduced this II, capital I with small i here. Again, this is something that we are going to use uh, when we train the neural network. You are going to see this very, very uh, simply and very concretely in the implementation that I am going to, uh, to show uh, very, very soon. 
So let's go through the implementation now. The very first thing that I'm going to show as usual is the listing. So you can stop this video anytime and go through the, the full uh, list of the program. And now I'm going to uh, explain parts of this program. So the very first part that we are going to see is line from 10 to 32. And what you see here in practice is the usual initialization that we have at the beginning of the code. So on line 15, we are saying that we are going to run the upfield network every time we need to have an output or an answer from this network, we are going to run 10 iterations. And then on line 25, what you see is that we define the total number of neurons, which in this case is four, because we want to have a four bit analog digital converter. Uh, then on line 30 uh, and 32, we define the input of the network, uh, which in this very particular case is 0.5. We are going to change this value once we run the example, so we will see what impact this value has on the output of the network. Now, if we continue with this and we go from line 40 until line 45, this is the usual memory allocation. So in this particular case here, we need two different arrays. One is one dimensional, which is the array V and N, which contains essentially the output for every artificial network, uh, every artificial neuron in the network. And then we have this two dimensional array, which is T, which in practice define what is the strength of the connection between um, between the neurons. Now, if we go ahead and we go from line 50 until line 59 here, this is what we get. So now we are defining some random initial conditions for the values of the neurons that, uh, that uh, practically um, are involved in the upfield network. So in this particular case here, what we do from line 52 to line 58 is very simple to understand. We assign a default value for every uh, component of the array V, which is equal to zero, but then we shoot a random number. And if that random number is bigger than 0 0.5, then we assign a value equal to one. On line 59, uh, this is just aesthetics. What we do here is that we show on the screen what are the initial conditions. This is not just aesthetics, actually, because this, this provides you how the method is working in practice. So if we now go ahead and we list from lines 60 to lines to line 80, this is where we um, implement the first part of formula six that I have shown earlier. So from line 65 until line 80, we have um, two uh, nested loops. And what we do here on line 72 in particular is that we define the values for the two dimensional array T. So these are the strengths um, for, of connection between the, the artificial neurons. And what we are doing here, we are exactly following formula six um, that we have just seen. Uh, so nothing very, very difficult in that part of the code. If we now go from line 160 to line 190, this is the final part of the code, and this is practically where the evolution happens. So the evolution of the upfield network here is nothing different from what uh, we have already discussed in a, in a previous video, but here things now are slightly different because you see on line 180, we are defining this value I2. And this value I2 is coming from the second part of formula six. So what we are doing here, we define this coefficient that we then use on line 182 in order to understand essentially if um, the value of the, um, let's say the value of the component of the array V is zero or one. And as you can see on line 180, I2 also depends on the value uh, or let's say on the variable X imp. 
Uh, so in practice, the value of the output of this network is going to be affected by the value that is provided uh, as the input. And then, of course, on lines 184, 185 and 187, we show on the screen what is happening during the evolution, iteration after iteration, until we get the final output. So. We are going now to run a few examples, but before I do this, I'm going to define a value for the input and initially we are going to, to give the value zero. So if we now run the network and we let it go for a little bit, what we see is that we get this particular value here. Um, so it is not exactly zero and why? Because we don't have enough iterations. So I'm going to change the number of iterations. I'm going to increase it and I'm going to set it to 50 so that now we can rerun everything and see what happens as the final output. So if we run this thing now, you see that this time it does end up having the output equal to zero. Uh, this is an important lesson because in practice it means that the number of iteration that you are um, giving to um, um, or the, let's say that you are providing to the network in order to provide the output is important and if it is uh, not big enough essentially you will not end up in the right um, let's say you will not end up having the right or the correct uh, value as output. Let's run a final example, so a different example. So we list from lines uh, from 10 to 32. And this time we are going to reduce again the number of iterations because we don't need to go until 50 in this very particular case. And let's say that the input is 0 0.5. So if we now run this, you will see that the result is this time different and why it is different because the input is different and this is consistent for, uh, with what we would expect from a Hopfield neural network that is now that has now been trained as an analog digital converter so this finalizes this video for today uh, as always i thank you very much for being here and for your attention and i hope to see you in the next one